Welcome to the second video of the Masterclass for Web and Product Managers. This is Shane Diffley. In our first lesson, we explored why the topics of digital management and governance are currently attracting so much attention, and learned how this is being driven both by the need to resolve long-standing problems and by desire to find new sources of competitive advantage. In this video, then, we'll get started on our journey. First, we'll go over a little of the history of this subject in order to understand why operations are now so critical to online success. Second, we'll delve into the concept of governance, upon which so much of web and product management is built, to find out exactly what it means and identify all the elements that come within its remit. And finally, I'll introduce a practical new framework you can use to plan a more stable system of control. As before, this lesson is intended for anyone who occupies a role of digital responsibility or accountability in online, no matter what your formal title, be it web manager, web product manager, online editor, web communications coordinator or similar. The aim is simply to equip you with the insight you need to reimpose order on operations. No other special expertise is required. And now, let's begin. Who remembers the early days of the internet, when the web was all about freedom of expression and Lord of the Rings? Wasn't it great? Anything could happen. And then it did. Jeff Bezos and others started selling goods online, and nothing was ever the same again. The geeks who had dominated the internet since its genesis were gradually sidelined, as scope began to grow and more staff piled on board. Among the first were the ubiquitous web designers, who were hired to create dramatic works of digital art, and sometimes even usable interfaces. Copywriters also got involved, as the need for professionally produced content was realised. As the reach of online continued to expand, marketing, advertising types and business analysts saw their chance and muscled in. Until finally, people like you and me were enlisted and given the task of coordinating it all. The metamorphosis was complete. Or was it? In fact, many of the administrative structures in use today continue to betray their untidy origins in the chaos of the early internet. While the complexity and scale of operations has grown beyond recognition, in many cases management has not kept pace. It's still much too easy to find organisations where processes, manpower, tools, roles, responsibilities and other elements have barely changed since they were first created, perhaps a decade or more ago. Part of the reason is that for a long time basic issues like usability, accessibility, content and others grabbed all the attention. In this context, it was easy to ignore inefficiencies when there was so much else to do, but no longer. A new generation of leaders for whom the web is neither cool nor cryptic has finally emerged and is being appointed to positions of authority. These people have lifted the lid on operations and discovered just how poorly things have been organised. To set it right, they need to build a new system of control, one that can create order from complexity and deliver the competitive edge their boards demand. Fortunately, that's precisely what the discipline of governance, upon which so much of web and product management relies, can offer. But here's a curious thing. Amongst all the current debate and commentary on this topic, there is as yet no commonly accepted definition for governance. The problem is that this term is so flexible and so malleable that just like the old joke, ask 10 different people to describe it and you're likely to get 11 different answers. It's how we set strategy. It's how we make decisions. It's how we manage operations. It's how we set up, you know, stuff, and so on. I think part of the issue is that for a long time, governance was simply a convenient label for just about any operational or leadership problem on a site. For example, if you had interpersonal issues on your team, governance was all about roles and responsibilities. On the other hand, if your challenge was establishing high-level direction, for you, governance concerns strategy and leadership. Adding to this confusion, the phrase web governance has often been used interchangeably with online and digital governance, such that its meaning has been further obscured. Thus, governance has been defined, not in any unified way, but as a woolly catch-all for the many disparate elements connected with running a digital service. And this type of fuzzy thinking is not new. Remember how the term web design used to be bandied about? Depending on who you talk to, it meant everything from graphic design to user experience to the process of design itself and more besides. But as we now know, design is not a single thing. Instead, it encompasses a wide set of activities, skills and other elements that together add up to a discipline called design. The same is true of governance. Governance is not a single activity. There is no solitary document, organizational structure, or a set of standards I can point to and say, there, that is my governance. Rather, it's a system. A system that unites the many distinct elements connected with online operations and allows them to be organized in a cohesive way. With this in mind, the definition for governance we'll be using is as follows. Governance is a system that describes how to manage a digital product or service in a controlled and orderly way. The principal benefit is that it can deliver the operational certainty and stability you need so you don't have to worry about things like inadequate authority or too little manpower. You have everything you need configured in the right way so that you can just get on with things and focus your effort on pursuing online goals. 
Admittedly, this definition is somewhat wider than those used by other commentators. For example, the respected analyst Lisa Welshman has described governance as simply the authoritative administrative structures that set policy and standards. And this is a good definition. Indeed, it's close to the original meaning of governance as a set of high-level rules. But as we've seen, and as my own experience suggests, in the parlance of practitioners, governance refers to more than just guidelines or standards, but to how things are actually done, including how web and product management is carried out, such as supervising people, allocating resource, and assuring essential tasks are expedited. This is backed up by findings from the research group Altimeter, in whose 2014 report, Social Business Governance, a framework to execute social business strategy, governance was described as a loaded word encompassing everything from policies to organizational structure. In addition, this discipline has divided into a number of separate domains, reflecting the relentless spread of technology. While the choice of terminology may never be perfect, in broad terms what is now called web governance refers to products or services delivered via a browser on devices such as a desktop computer, smartphone and tablet, and often including native apps too. The larger realm of digital governance embraces all these things, as well as how internet technology is used in general by an organization, from smart bridges to talking cars, flying killer robots and the internet of things. As regards this masterclass, for the most part we'll restrict ourselves to the area of web governance, which nonetheless embraces a huge array of websites, social networks, apps, intranets, mobile sites and more. Of course it could still legitimately be asked whether this definition is too wide. Can all the dozens of factors involved in online management really be represented by such a broad description? Indeed, its sheer scope may have set alarm bells ringing for you. Oh lord, I'm just a product manager. Do I really have to be an expert in everything? Well, of course you don't. That's why you have specialists on your team to look after the details for you. All the same, you need enough of an understanding of the totality of web governance in order to, at the very least, be able to ask the right questions of colleagues and, more importantly, prevent the wool being pulled over your eyes. And in any event, despite such diversity, when you drill right down to it, everything can in fact be summarized into just three basic components, as illustrated here. This is the new framework of web governance. It is this model that lies at the heart of effective operations and describes everything you need to plan and build a successful system of online administration. As you can see, the framework consists of three interrelated elements. These are, at the top we have the four primary activities. In summary, these describe everything you must do in order to expedite web or product management effectively. At the base we have the four resources. These describe everything you must provide in order to ensure the above activities can take place. And at the heart of the model we have the concept of scale. Scale is a measure of the complexity, size and levels of engagement of an online presence and helps determine how to configure the four activities and resources into a workable system of control. This framework has a number of advantages as an approach to governance. First, it's comprehensive. It encompasses everything you need to do in order to run an online initiative of any type and also lists all the resources required to support it. Nothing is excluded. Second, it's robust. No matter what a project is about, whether web, internet, social network or app, or what platform it's on, mobile, desktop or tablet, the same activities always occur, supported by the same resources. They never change. Indeed, a key lesson of this video series, and one I hope you really take note of, is just how consistent the elements of governance are across the board. Of course, sadly, this means you're not unique. Sorry about that. But on the other hand, happily it means you're not unique, which suggests you can rely on the new framework as a guide wherever you work. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, the framework is scalable, meaning no matter how big your product or service becomes, it's flexible enough to cope. The only thing that changes is that the granularity and sophistication by which the various activities and resources are carried out will increase as a factor of what we call scale. That is, the larger the scale of your undertaking, the bigger, busier and more complex it is, the more detailed become the various activities, and thus the more sophisticated must be the resources to support it. Which, when you think about it, makes a lot of sense. By way of analogy, consider how similar operations are in, say, the bricks and mortar world of running a retail store, despite differences in scale. Sure, there may be many contrasts between a huge international discounter and a corner store, but at a basic level they must both carry out the same activity to keep things going, including planning stock, packing shelves, taking returns, managing tills, etc. And as well as that, they must both ensure the same categories of resourcing are in place to support it all, such as staff, till software, a stock system, a reordering process, and more. 
The key distinction, of course, is that the granularity and sophistication by which things are done differs greatly as a factor of scale. While the corner store can afford to be quite informal in its approach, the volume and complexity of supervision for a large retailer is such that many more specialist staff, expensive tools and formal processes are needed. And what is true offline is equally true online. In this sense, a good way to think about the framework of web governance is as a conceptual model. That is, it simplifies what could otherwise be an impenetrably complex array of management factors into a single straightforward construct, providing a natural home for everything to do with operations, and also making it easier to recognize interdependencies and relationships that may once have been obscure. Similar to other conceptual models like the four P's of marketing or Porter's five forces, this framework also has predictive qualities, and as we'll see, can serve as a starting point when planning people, the processes you'll need, tools and budget. Of course, it cannot tell you exactly how to manage your site, or exactly how many people to hire, but it does give very clear indications of how sophisticated your approach must be. By way of example, let's consider the needs of two businesses at opposite ends of the online spectrum, Mom and Pop's Diner versus Megacorp. Mom and Pop run a website, and it's very simple. It's composed of just a dozen or so pages of brochure content, mainly text and images with a few downloads. Because it's aimed at their local community, it's not so busy and is used principally to publicize opening hours and special offers. In contrast, Megacorp runs scores of sites, apps and social networking presences localized to markets around the world. Each contains thousands of pages of sophisticated interactive content and attracts millions of visitors per month. But although these endeavors could not be more different, the fact is they must both expedite exactly the same activities and invest in exactly the same resources in order to deliver a minimum level of stability. That is, each needs to provide leadership, undertake development, expedite maintenance and manage infrastructure and provide the resources to do so. But as we know, Megacorp's online presence is huge while Mom and Pop's is tiny. This means that although the categories of activity and resource may be the same, the granularity and sophistication by which they are deployed differs hugely. For Mom and Pop, the configuration of their governance may be as simple as asking their son, Junior, to maintain the site using a few freeware tools and giving him a couple of hundred dollars a month to keep it going. Easy. In contrast, Megacorp requires dozens of skilled people, designers, techies, writers, organized into teams with clear responsibilities and supervised by numerous web and product managers. In addition, they require expensive and specialist tools with a large budget to support operations. So we see that while the core activities and resources are the same for both, the granularity and sophistication by which they are implemented differs enormously. This difference is a factor of the difference in scale between the two organizations. And that is why the governance framework is such a powerful tool for imposing order for web and product managers. It enables you to recognize and plan for the needs of vastly different projects in a structured and predictable way. So, if you're currently supervising an online service and are confused about what activities to carry out or what resources you need, use the framework of web governance as a means for auditing and filling in any gaps. Alternatively, if you've been tasked with creating a new management system or revising one already in place, use this model and the concept of scale as a basis for forecasting and communicating the sophistication and cost of the solution that will emerge. And that brings us to the end of Lesson 2. By this point, you should have a good understanding of how the web governance framework can be used to plan a better system of control, and indeed may already have some ideas for changes you want to implement. And yet, you should resist the temptation of leaping to a solution of, say, creating a system that looks picture perfect, for example, in the division of activities and resources, but is incapable of delivery. We must remind ourselves that operations are not an end in themselves. They're merely a means to an end. The actual form they take is not as important as the outcome they must deliver that is, stability. As the research firm Gartner would have it, we're probably in a bit of a hype cycle about things governance at the moment, hovering around the peak of inflated expectations. It's at this peak when everything seems just so easy that dreams begin to shatter and disillusionment sets in. As such, it's critical that you keep your eye on the prize and apply your common sense. In any event, we're still a long way from showing what a successful configuration of management actually looks like and have plenty of groundwork yet to cover. With that in mind, in our next video, we're going to explore the web governance framework in more detail to expose the many important elements from which its activities and resources are composed and upon which web and product managers rely. We'll also delve into the concept of scale to find out how you can use it to assess your online presence and begin planning a better approach to operations. Thanks for watching.
Remember, for lots of additional insights as well as free downloads, visit my personal site at diffity.com.